Good afternoon. We are Lucia La Silla and Andrea Hurtado. We are general practitioners on our first year of residence. Um, and we work in the healthcare center of Arrabal, is a neighborhood in Zaragoza, here in Spain. We are going to talk about a project, uh, a teaching program uh, for medical students. Um, and the aim of this project is to help students to perform a, a good clinical interview. We started this project because most of medical students do not feel really prepared after their medical education to, to perform these physical examinations. And this is because the university tends to focus on the theoretical part of the subjects. Like they know a lot about um, uh, diagnosis, treatments, biomarkers, but they leave aside the practice part and the clinical performance that is so important in their future jobs. Moreover, in the teaching programs, uh, they focus a lot on the specialized hospital topics and they leave aside to the generalistic knowledge. Uh, the reforce the students ends with a lot of knowledges, but uh, they don't know how to apply this to the real practice. And this is because a lack of, co of, uh, a lack of confidence uh, on their communication skills and their capacities. This generates a fear in the students to face the patient that they, and they have to fight against these fears on the first years of residence and not in their teaching process that will be more logical. Uh, this lack in, the, in our teaching program um, made us realize about these questions. Are the students really prepared to face a clinical interview after their graduation? Do they know the value of primary care in the university period? And how can we GPs help these students on the, with the communication skills and give them more confidence? In order to try to solve this problem, we thought that the residents could teach the students so that the learning process is more horizontal. So the residents teach them some practical uh, some clinic practical practices that will be useful in their future job. This way, it is easier for them to assimilate the technologies. In the context of the innovative educational project of our university in Zaragoza, we set up an innovation, innovation group composed of six GPs, eight residents of medicine, and 15 uh, medical students, and organized two general coordination meetings. These coordination meetings were to decide the teaching priorities. We created a project guide with these teaching priorities that were articular examination of knee, shoulder, and back, knee uh, and shoulder infiltrations, communication techniques, and functional bandage. After that, uh, six small group sessions were carried out by the participants. In those sessions, the residents explained and practices with the students the teaching priorities mentioned before. Once the students learn the techniques, they record their 12 short films with the intention of including them as teaching material for the other students. These produce an interdisciplinary learning environment and improve the students' abilities. Now, we are going to show you some examples uh, that we brought of the recorded films that are already included in the teaching program of family medicine and communication subject for the academic year 2019-2020 at the University of Medicine of Zaragoza for third, fourth, and fifth year of the degree. We start with the shoulder examination Here, uh, here the resident is explaining to the students how to perform a correct and right uh, examination of the shoulder. 
And then these two people who are in the video are the students and they are following the instructions. And this video, this video then will be appear in the classes of the medicine and communication subject of this year. They don't only explain the germination of the shoulder, they also explain uh, what happens if there is a problem, if it is pathological. Now they are explaining the passive movement of the shoulders, how to explore it. They are explaining some maneuvers for the shoulder. We also brought a little part of knee exploration. This student is explaining how to check the cruciate ligament of the knee. She's telling that if you pull the, uh, you grab that side of the, and you pull it on her side, it moves, it means that the interior, interior cruciate ligament is affected. And if you move it in the opposite side and it moves, it means that the posterior cruciate ligament is affected. We don't only explain examination, we also explain some procedures like infiltrations with all this, the instruments. Also, how to put the gloves, the sterilized gloves on, that the, the first years are a little difficult. Which anesthetic to use and where to function. We show, uh, the students are showing two techniques, two different. This one is the first one. And in the other side, one finger below uh, to inject the, the injector. Now with the, with the knee in a flex position, a flex position. These are all the students just playing with it. Some functional bandage. In the case the the ankle is twisted. We can uh, we show them some procedures, some bandages, techniques, and this would be the beginning. And here we show you how it would be in the end. Due to the satisfaction of the students and the residents who participate in this project, this year we have also added some other teaching materials like abdominal examination and neurological examination. So this is the last example we brought and in this one the residents explaining them how to perform the, the neurological examination of the cranial nerves. We just broke a small part of it where they see how to explore the oculomotor nerve. They see following the eyes with the finger.
Now they are going to check the, the reflex of the pupils with a lantern. So the result of this project is still uh, preliminary because as we said, it's going to be implemented in this academic year. So we still don't have the real results, but we think it's going to be really useful for the students' learning process because they actually um, decide how to do the videos, they perform the videos, and it's a way more visual and practical uh, to learn because it's more horizontal, as my colleague said before. Uh, and after watching the videos in the whole class, they, they will perform the techniques on themselves and with the classmates. So as conclusions for the, for the, for the progress, for the project, we would say that the satisfaction of the participants, the created materials and the cooperation between them, uh, it's significantly positive. In spite of the technical quality of the videos, the, the material has an added value and is that the students pay much more attention to this kind of resources because it, they are performed by their classmates, by their colleagues. And as the, it's people like them, they are going to be, they pay more attention. The final results, once we have them, they will be used to measure the learning rate of the students uh, in this innovative teaching progress um, in, our, in our university, uh, with lack of simulations and audiovisual resources. And now other health science departments of the university are interested in sharing this project on their subjects. We would like to, to open some points of discussion uh, to know how is the situation in your countries. So do you think the educational system of your university provides the skills to handle practical challenges immediately after graduation? Also, are similar techniques that focus on practical skills a part of your current educational system? Do you think family medicine and communication skill learning is enough represented in your country? We wanted to thank all the participants in this project. This is a photo of some residents and some students that participated in the, in the project, and also the, the, the GPs. And we brought, uh, we brought a goodbye video from the students. Thank you so much. Thank you.